I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. You got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast Season 5. I'm your host, Nostrada Ben, and I host this episode with my best friend of all time, Johnny D. Hey, how's he going today, my friend? Fine, and you? Yes, I'm going super great. And you know what? Uh, an indie wrestler today. Yes, of course. And we, uh, you're watching the Season 5 and... Uh, we discover a wonderful person, um, lives from uh, North Carolina. I'm talking about he is uh, the current uh, NICW American Pro Wrestling uh, Television Champion and also a uh, former UPWA Tag Team Champion. I'm talking about Sean Cruz. How's he going today, my friend? What's up, fellas? How we doing? Yes, Fine. we're going super great. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, we, uh, As I said, we discover, uh, honestly, a, a really good person. And when uh, we are uh, working on your profile, we discover a, uh, a couple of interesting stuff. So uh, go ahead uh, with the first question, my friend. Okay, no problem. Yes. Uh, okay, Sean, how, how did you get into professional wrestling? Oh, wow. Oh, man, that seems like so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, man, I, I watched as a kid growing up. I mean, I loved okay. it. I love, you know, Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, that kind of stuff. But I've always been on the smaller side. I'm only like 5'8". When I got okay. into the bit, when I got into the business, I was 130 pounds. And okay. you got to remember, this was before, like, Rey Mysterio and Jericho and, like, all these guys. You know what I mean? The smaller guys kind of mm-hmm. taking over. Even, even CM Punk, uh, Adam Cole, before all that stuff. So it was it was just something fun to do with my friends, to be honest. I mean, it was something to challenge myself physically. Um, okay. And then, you know, three or four years into it, the industry started changing a little bit. You know, you did have, like, the WCW cruiserweights and those type guys, the mm-hmm. Lucha Builders. Um, and so I was like, okay, maybe I can do something with this, you know? Um, yeah. But, yeah, i just always been a lifelong fan. Uh, Shawn Michaels, you know, huge inspiration to me. Um, always kind of tried to pattern myself after him, at least – with um with the way I you know take bumps and sell if nothing else. Awesome and um, um we know that you uh, wrestle uh, in 2023 for the uh, MLW uh, wrestling promotion. Can you share that uh, with us, my friend? Which one was that? Uh, we know that you wrestled for the AML wrestling in oh, 2020. AML. Yes, sir. Yeah, AML, oh, yes. Can you share that uh, experience with us? So AML, um, I haven't been part of the big show yet, but I've been on Future okay. Stars three times, which is kind of like their uh, proving ground for AML. Class acts, love AML, love everybody there, Tracy, Brian, all the guys backstage. <laughs> uh, man, it's I mean, if you're if you're a wrestler, a professional wrestler in North Carolina, that is the place you want to be. I mean, yeah. they do WrestleCade every year. They put on the big, huge uh, wrestling convention in November every year, which is a must go if you're a fan of professional wrestling. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Have you ever done a WWE, ROH, CZW, or AEW TNA uh, tryout? No, unfortunately. Um, I did do an NWA tryout back in January of 2000. And yeah, yeah. Of course. Course. It was with uh, Ricky Morton, of course, EC3. That was a lot of fun. Um, that actually got me hooked up with School of Morton in Chucky, Tennessee, which is I'm a big part of now. Uh, we do our TV tapings like every two weeks on Sundays. Um, but as far as uh, anything else, I mean, not really. I've, I've had opportunities and um, I've had to pass up on a lot of things due to some personal things in my life. Um, 
but I've had a lot of friends that have uh, had those opportunities and, you know, I'm always cheering for them and happy for them. And, you know, it's not over yet. Who knows? I might, I might get a shot somewhere. Um, I did do a uh, ring crew for ring of honor once for a paper. Okay. That, was, that was a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, Interesting. And um, about uh, the Rock and Roll Express, uh, we know recently you, sh uh, you shared a seminar with uh, Ricky Martin um, from the Rock and Roll Express on May uh, 23rd, uh, if my memory is good. Uh, will you be uh, there for the, the wrestling camp, my friend? Uh, yeah, if, if possible. My schedule is really full right now for the rest of the year. I imagine. Uh, I'm already, yeah, I'm already taking bookings for 2025, looking to do some overseas stuff. Maybe go to Canada if someone uh -huh. would like a, a grizzled old, old school uh, wrestling veteran. I'd love to come work in Canada. That would be a dream. Um, yeah, any anytime I get to share a locker room or anything with Ricky Morton, it's like sitting under the learning tree. I mean, not only is he just an amazing human being, but he is a wealth of knowledge. And if you want to learn tag team wrestling, that's who you talk to. Yes. Uh, and uh, before your wrestling career, career, uh, did you practice uh, another sport? No, see, like I was, I was saying earlier, um, with you guys, like I've always been smaller. So when okay. I was in high school, I was like mm -hmm. five three, maybe a hundred and five pounds. I played oh, middle, yeah. I played middle school football for like one year, and that was it. And then we didn't have a wrestling team at the school I went to um, until like two years after I graduated. So no, I never really played sports. Um, it was just, it's just one of those things that just kind of happened. And my friends started wrestling, and we were like, I was like, okay, I'll do this, and it'll be fun to hang out with the boys. And it just became a passion, like something that burns deep in me more than anything ever has. I've been doing this since I was 19 years old. I'll be mm -hmm. 43 in July. So Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we know that uh, currently you are a baby face, but uh, do you prefer wrestling as a heel or a face and why? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm a career heel. I love it. I am just, I don't want to curse on here, but I'm an a-hole when it comes to wrestling. Like, I absolutely love being a heel. Um But I'm learning to be a baby face better. But I'm yeah. not one of those like rah rah, let's go baby faces. Yeah. I'm I'm more one of those. I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna show you what I can do, and we're gonna beat up the bad guy, and I'm gonna get the crowd behind me that way. I'm yeah. I'm one of those guys. Like I, I'm durable. I never give up. I'm always fighting back. I'm like the underdog. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, exactly. If, if I had to choose, absolutely a heel. But I will say this. Being a baby face, you make a lot more money on merchandise. Yeah, gimmicks. of course. So... That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree about that. But when you are a uh, ill wrestler, you don't have restriction. So <laughs> that's very different. But Ooh. in well, terms well, of money, oh, that's very different. Yeah. I will say this, especially down here in the South, in North Carolina, there's a lot of family-friendly shows. So unfortunately, even as a heel... We do have some restrictions, yeah. Um, but it just causes you to be more creative of yeah. what you can say and do to, to make the crowd mad. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. my job as the heel is to make sure that whoever my baby face is makes a ton of money. Like I want them to love that guy and go spend all the money they can at his merchandise table. Okay, we, we knew somewhere on the web that you, uh, you wrestled against uh, the, the WCW uh, legend, Buff Bagwell. Uh, can you share us the, this experience? So actually, yeah, um, I met Buff years and years ago. Um, yeah. uh, we used to do these what we call Legends events with, the, okay. the, with my home promotion, ACPW, back okay. way back 2004, 2005, and okay. um, worked him on a sh worked with him on a show in a tag match uh, six seven years ago. Right before I tore my ACL, and my meniscus, I was out of wrestling for like three years because of that. And then yeah, recently a couple weeks ago, um, we actually he was managing. Uh, a tag team that I was wrestling against and we got to work with him and I got spray painted NWO by Buff Bagwell. <laughs> like, I yeah. mean, call me a Mark, call me what you want. That was top, one of the top moments of my entire career. Nice. And uh, about the tag team uh, division, uh, we know you won the uh, UPW tag team uh, championship with uh, Steven Idol as the American Pit Bulls. Uh, do you consider that one of the most important achievements of your wrestling career, my friend? Honestly, yes, because when we first, when I first got into that company, they did not want me there. 
the promoter okay. did not. I was, they didn't look at me as the guy that's going to be one of the top guys. And I earned my spot there. And we earned those tag team championships. And, man, I wish Steven was still wrestling. You know, he's moved on to bigger and better things. He actually joined the military, and uh, he's doing great. Shout out to Steven Idol. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I've actually got a couple different tag team partners that I'm going to be debuting with here soon. So I love my tag team wrestling, man. I do. I mean, singles is fun, but when tag team wrestling is done correctly, there's nothing yeah. better. If we have a, a, a total package and a good, uh, total package. <laughs> uh, how we said, uh, um, you know, uh, complicity, 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 complicity with your tag team partner, you know, that's perfect. And uh, go ahead. Okay, Sean, uh, who has been your toughest opponent in your wrestling career? Oh, wow. Toughest. Um, I'll tell you what, I've had more wars with a guy named Roosevelt. Uh, okay. used to go by Victor Andrews. Um, he's the guy you guys definitely want to talk to. I'll put you in touch with him. But um, he's a model, okay. an actor, an MMA fighter. He's done WWE, TNA. He's done all that okay. stuff. Oh, okay. So, oh, nice. So first yeah, we actually, yeah, yeah, we actually just did a 60-minute Ironman match. Empty arena. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. it was unbelievable. Like, that yes, was the because... most emotional thing I've ever done in my entire career. Nice. And uh, as you said, uh, a couple of months ago, you wrestled in an Iron Man match against, uh, in, in a private uh, wrestling match against uh, Victor Andrews. Um, can you share this? Yeah, it was, um, it, it started off as kind of just like a, we just threw it out there. Like yeah. there was a company who used to run in West Virginia. They were okay. talking about doing a reunion show. Mm -hmm. And we basically were like, okay, we want to do this match at your show. And it, they, they weren't going to do one. So we started talking amongst each other. And he's like, look, we got a building. We got a ring. I got a podcast. We can stream it on. Yeah. Let's do it. So we did it. And it was, it is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life physically. I don't know how Probably. I can myself up yeah. off that mat for 60 yeah. minutes. But we did it. And the reason we did it is because me and this guy are brothers, man. Like our story, we'll, we'll get into that another time. Maybe or he can tell you if you guys had him on. But we did not like each other, like legit. We did not like each other at all when we first met. And now we're we're brothers. Like I can literally say that guy's my best friend. <laughs> and we invite uh, all our uh, uh, subscriber, if you want to listen a really good match, honestly, just tap on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, Victor Andrews versus uh, Sean Cruz Iron Man match. Um, the match uh, is hosting by a, a um, podcast called I don't remember the name of the the best uh, podcast. Yes, the BD BD Wrestling Podcast. Best exactly, podcast. exactly. Sorry, it's my bad. But if you want to listen to a really good match, uh, that's awesome. And we uh, we saw you after. Uh, after the match, uh, completely wet. Uh, oh, that was just insane, honestly. It was amazing. <laughs> like I, I literally almost couldn't get out of bed the next day. Like it was, it was, <laughs> it was almost like an exorcism of sorts for me because, like, I've had a lot of personal and professional demons, and Victor's been there through all of it, and he wanted me to get out there and and you know released all that doubt, all that fear, all that anger. And that's what we yeah. did. And it was, it was that amazing. Save life, professional wrestling, save life, honestly. Absolutely. It saved mine. hundred percent saved mine. Yeah. Cool. Uh, for our pre-closing uh, segment, I give you a name in a few words. Tell me something about him. All right. Okay. So the first one is the rock and roll express. Oh my God! Um, greatest tag team, or well, greatest babyface tag team of all time. <laughs> um, these guys, you go watch their old stuff, man. It's just it's electrifying. The crowd's into it; they believed it, and nobody is more passionate about this business, this sport of professional wrestling, than Ricky Morton is. The second one is uh, Mick Foley. Oh, Mick Foley. Um, honestly, I wasn't a huge Foley fan until I actually got into wrestling and understood just how important and influential he was to the business. Mm -hmm. um, haven't had the pleasure to meet him yet, but um, I love his work, and you can't deny his, you know, his record. The late Bam Bam Bigelow. Bam Bam. That was the guy that I was legitimately scared of when I was a kid. The, the size, the tattoos, and everything. And he was always going against my favorite wrestler. So, of course, I had to hate him. But one of the most underrated big men of all time. Oh, yeah. yeah and, one of uh, the best. Uh, yes, exactly. And that totally makes sense what you're saying because 
uh, you're a, a lightweight and Bam Bam is a heavyweight, but he moves like a, a lightweight, so that makes totally sense what you're saying, my friend. Yeah, such as a moonsault flying at box. Yes, he is right, very exactly. awesome. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, the last one, uh, Sean Cruz, yourself. Oh, man. Um, passionate. passionate. Loves, this, loves this business more than anything in the world. <laughs> uh, misunderstood. I'll throw that one out there. Um, man, I'm just, I want to, I want to make memories. I want to make moments. I want to make people like, I love wrestling because um, the world's the bad place. We're not going to act like it's not. So if yeah. I can make people forget for two or three hours when they go to a wrestling show about what's going on in their personal life, their professional life, their family's sick, something like that's going on, problems with their kids, just make them forget about it. Let them exactly. cheer, let them boo, and just let them enjoy two or three hours of their life, no matter how bad yes. it is. That's why I do yes. that. We are uh, totally agree about that because goddamn pro wrestling is so up. We know that there's a rough period, but it is what it is. But professional wrestling can just, uh, how we said, uh, remove your um, bad, uh, uh, bad feeling. Honestly, bad feeling. Honestly, bad feeling. Uh, why bad feeling in your mind, and you can just escape and express your uh, your passion and. When you're in the, in the middle of the square circle, you think just, I need to make a match. That's it. That's all. So it's all about entertaining and the rest. Fuck, fuck the rest. <laughs> exactly. Fuck the rest. I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much for this quick interview and for ending uh, the interview. As usual, my partner, Benoit, a.k.a. Uh, Nostradamus Ben. It's all about the French prophet. And he will try to predict the future of our guests. Let's go. Okay. Uh, first of all, Sean, thank you so much for the interview. Uh, like my partner said. Yes. Uh, who's who's your next opponent? Uh, next opponent is actually going to be in West Virginia on Thursday night. I'm defending my uh, American Pro Wrestling Television Championship against a guy okay. by the name of Bobby Yella. And okay. Bobby's Bobby Bobby's a good friend of mine. Man, we we went out and tore it up last Saturday. In Fayetteville, West Virginia. Um, I think I put a couple of the clips online already. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to that one, man. It's always fun with Bobby. Okay, I predict that uh, you're going to kick his ass. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, he even knows that. He'll be the first one to tell you that uh, when, when we wrestle, he's like, man, I wear this ass whooping for a week after me and you fight. And that's the thing. It's like, to me, my wrestling's not pretty because I don't think wrestling should be pretty and choreographed and looking and all that. It should look like a fight and feel like a fight. Exactly. That's, just, that's my style. But if you want to discover uh, a, a really good wrestler, uh, just tap on YouTube, Sean Cruz. Honestly, you're awesome. Thank you, you're, man. You're, you're a misunderstood Welcome. guy, but Very. God, awesome to discover this uh, this uh, interesting profile. So, thank you so much for your uh, 20 minutes uh, generous time. Oh, not 20 minutes. Uh, well, yes, uh, of course. And uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, fuck the rest. <laughs> I love it. I love yes. it. <laughs> Take care and have a great one, my friend. Hey, you too. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.